Thanks for joining us. I'm Martika and we are going to be talking today with Diane Kelly, Dr. Diane Kelly, about a very sobering and difficult subject. And I sort of want to give you a word of warning ahead of time. Um, we're going to be talking about the issue of hate crimes and how it affects the GLBT community and some statistical information and some basic examples of what has happened in our country related to hate crimes. That's a very serious subject and a very difficult one to take in, but we encourage you to find the strength to hear this information from us. Be aware of it because the more informed you are, the more forearmed you are. So, and we'll give you an opportunity to um, reach us at the end of the program with your comments and questions and concerns. So, I'm going to introduce my friend, Dr. Diane Kelly. Thank you, Martika. Absolutely. Um, there are several graphs on this presentation, and uh, the first one is masculinity and the war on America's transgender youth. The following graphs are on the 50 transgender people under the age of 30 years of age, which were murdered in the United States between 1996 and 2005. Mm -hmm. And on the next slide, we see the means of violence, how they're killed, shot, stabbed, beaten, strangled, other. And 50% of the time, it's multiple ways, more than one of the above. The gender of the presentation of these victims, the vast majority are males presenting as females. And divided by race, the vast majority of them are black and Latino. There's not that many whites. And when the graphs come up on the, on the presentation, then you'll, you'll be able to see that. The age difference of the assailants you know, the person that's, that's doing the hate crime versus their, their victim are usually within five years of age of each other, really? which is kind of unique. Oh. Investigation as a hate crime. 71% are not considered hate crimes. 29% are. Now, how do these get solved? Unsolved crimes uh, nationally, uh, the percentage is at one point, for all unsolved murders, it's quite a bit lower. If it's a hate crime, it's less likely to be solved. Yeah, that's very sad. Mm -hmm. and, and we pulled the FBI uh, hate crime statistics from 1996 to 2005. And on this graph, you can see uh, people are killed because of uh, disability, religion, uh, ethnicity, sexual orientation, or race. And if gender identity expression were a hate crime, it would rank right up there against the top one, race. Mm -hmm. Very little difference between the two. And that surprised us when we did this research. Of the 50 transgender people that are murdered under the age of 50 during this time frame in the United States, seven of them were killed in California, uh, six in Texas. Most of them are down south. Uh, two in Arizona, four in Florida. But what surprised me most is Washington, D.C. The, the, the city of Washington, D.C. in that same time frame had seven transgender people murdered. So the scene of our government is more, is, is just as many as the entire state of California. Boy, these are very scary statistics. Mm -hmm. On the average, 12 to 15 transgender people are murdered in the United States every year regardless of age, whether they're under 30 or not. Uh, those murders tend to be up close, they tend to be very personal, and they tend to usually be a mutilation. Mm. In 2004, they murdered 38 transgender people in the United States. In that one year? Mm -hmm. In that one year. Oh my. So shall we look at some of the uh, people that have died? Please. First, we see Willie Houston. Uh, 
this happened in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, he was shot by a fellow. And let me give you a little history. Willie was out on a boat with his girlfriend, with his fiance. He just proposed to her, and she said, I will. So they just became engaged. They landed at the dock, and anyway, she had to use the ladies' room, and she said, Willie, will you hold my purse while I go in the ladies' room? I don't want to take it in there. So he's holding her purse. Now, Willie, for a living, what he did is he helped uh, disabled people. He drove a, a disabled van for these people, took them here and there, and helped them. That's what he did for a living. He all of a sudden, he sees a blind man about to cross the street and step into traffic. So, mind you, he still got his, his fiance's purse on his arm. He ran up to the guy, grabbed him by the arm, and he says, Look, I do this for a living. Let me help you across the street. And the guy says, Thank you. Thank you very much. So Willie started walking him across the street when this idiot saw him, mistook him for a gay man and a transgender. So he walked up to Willie and shot him with a 38. Killed him right there in the middle of the street thought nothing of it. The guy went to prison for it. Hmm. The next one is Timothy Cinnamon Brodus. Died in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Was shot multiple times. He was a 21-year-old uh, transgender sex worker. He was shot several times by the driver of a Honda Civic or a Cord. She ran a few steps from the car, collapsed, and died on the street and very little else was ever reported on this case. Hmm. Jessica Mercado, and there is her picture, New Haven, Connecticut, stabbed multiple times, then burnt. And this was in, in uh, 2003, on May 9th. She was a 24-year-old trans woman. Her body was found draped across her mattress in the charred remains of her apartment. She had been stabbed multiple times before the apartment was set on fire. She was laid to rest in her native Puerto Rico. Kim Young, Washington, D.C., stabbed to death. Uh, she was a transgendered sex worker in Washington, D.C., and had also been a key prosecution witness in a murder trial in 2000. Uh, this is three years later, mind you. Now, she has been stabbed and succumbed to those injuries later in the morning. The guy that was charged with the murder, a uh, 34-year-old man, was charged with this. And they're, these are hard to do. Bella Martinez, Los Angeles, California, was shot and only 24 years old. Beautiful young lady. Selena Alvarez Hernandez, Council Bluff, Iowa. She worked in a meatpacking plant. In, in Omaha and was last seen alive leaving an Omaha bar. She was found stabbed several times and unconscious on a lawn in a house in Council Bluffs, Iowa, and was pronounced dead a short time later at a nearby hospital. Uh, Donathan Rogers, Cleveland, Ohio, shot multiple times 2005, November 15th. <clears throat> Rogers identified as a male to female transsexual uh, and have participated in events at the Lesbian Gay Community Service Center for Greater Cleveland. He was also a sex worker and was working near uh, uh, Max Hayes High in the early morning hours of November 15th. She was shot in the head by one of two assailants. When she ran, she was shot several additional times. Anyone with information is asked to call the homicide detectives there. Diane, I want to stop you. Okay. You've heard information that's very difficult to take in, very painful to share with people, very painful to hear, and very painful to gain knowledge about. The purpose in our sharing this with you is first and foremost to make you aware of the reality that exists for the transgender community. 
and second to forearm you, to prepare you, to give you a more clear picture of what happens with a community of people that is often very marginalized simply by virtue of the assumption that they fail to fit into a typical society's box. Thank you for sharing this with us because I think while it may be very difficult to hear, we're not trying to sensationalize the death of these individuals. In a sense, we are doing what is often done similarly in activist communities called the reading of the names. Mm -hmm. When groups of people are killed in very painful, very unjust actions across the world, activists frequently come together and they enact events like the readings of, reading of the names where they toll a bell for each name and they share the information that we have about that person's death in order to celebrate their life and the fact that they meant something to someone and were loved, appreciated, remembered, and celebrated by them. We hope that despite the difficulty that you might feel in hearing all of this, that you too can recognize that we try to celebrate the lives of these individuals and change the laws, the circumstances, what is allowed and what is not, in order to stop these things from happening. Mm -hmm. To see change happen in a positive way so that people can be better understood and better accepted. Correct. People try to destroy what they don't understand. That's right. And we try to talk on these subjects in order to open new minds to new right. ideas. It's the fight, the flight, the fight or flight instinct that all human beings have and when you're confronted by something that you don't understand or that frightens you drastically enough you either run from it or destroy you respond it. to it you destroy it you attack it and too much of that is happening in communities of human beings mm -hmm. and we need to see that stopped we need to see laws changed we need to see attention brought to it. We need to see celebrations of the names like we're doing here. And we encourage all of you to be more aware of events like this in your communities, regardless of what your moral, spiritual, religious positions might be on the existence of these people, the bottom line reality is that however different from you they may be, they were still living human beings and no one deserves to be destroyed in ways such as we described here. Come back again in the future and join us for the second half of this presentation. It will likely also be painful to listen to but we encourage you to do so because the more knowledge you have, the more prepared you can be. Thank you for joining us, and please come back and join us.